you would um we were we were kind of ragging on Quebec a little bit, and rightfully so. I'm not <laughs> no apologies here. Uh, you know, because of their hoarding of their natural resources when they want us to, you know, they mm -hmm. want us to give over our money and our resources, but they want to keep theirs and they have, you know, and, and I don't understand the entire history of why they have such a powerful voice in Ottawa, why they're guaranteed a certain amount of seats, etc. But in a lot of ways, uh, and uh, I've heard this in the provincial politics, but uh, as a federal party, because there, there's the Parti Québécois and there's a Black Québécois, one's provincial, one's federal. I never can remember which one's which. Yeah. But uh, they do a great job. Now, granted, again, they have more seats at the table, but they do a great job of looking after their own. Uh, they do a mm -hmm. great job of making sure Quebec gets what Quebec wants. And a lot of the politicians uh, pander to them because they're, they're such a powerful force. Um, I think the Maverick Party could probably, you know, or, or I guess my question to you, I, I think the Maverick Party could adopt some of their strategies, I guess, to represent Western Canada in the way that they represent Quebec. My question is, what do you think the Maverick Party could take from that? Uh, you know, where, where, you know, where, what are they doing right for their people that we could adopt for Western Canada if Maverick Party well, was to, if we were to elect uh, you guys? It's kind of funny. I used to say, uh, during the election, I used to say it frequently. I, I used to say, uh, you know, I used to be angry with, at at the Bloc Quebecois, but now I'm just jealous <laughs> because that's honestly they have done a great job at at protecting their province. You know, uh, using the tools at their disposal to get what they want, to steer things to their way. And, and we in the West have not done that very well at all, uh, historically. Uh, and there's, you know, you could get into why that is. That would be a, a massive rabbit trail. But you're <laughs> right. That's where we need to be. That's in, that is indeed what the Maverick Party is seeking to do, is to give ourselves that amount of, of say. And, and, you know, one of the things, and this was... Uh, a critique, I suppose, of the Conservative Party of Canada was not that long ago, you know, uh, Elections Canada was doing a review of the current uh, demographics of the country and deciding if there needed to be any shifting of, of the electoral boundaries. And they found in the middle of all that, that Quebec actually, according to their demographics, which is slowly declining, that and, and in, a, in the West, it is increasing, actually, uh, that two seats, that Quebec actually deserved, I think it was two less seats. And and there was, I think, four or something in, in Western Canada to be distributed. I think two of them were in Alberta. Uh, and, of course, the Bloc Québécois stood up and said, Un, over my dead body, basically. Uh, you know, I'm paraphrasing, they didn't say that, but you know, they're, they're paraphrasing, you know, we're, they said, uh, uh, we're not doing it. We are, we are Quebec, we are important. We are, uh, you know, distinct. We are, and they go into all of these here things and they raise a stink and then they, you know, they get it put to a vote. My critique of the, of the Conservative Party of Canada comes at that vote. You know, uh, there. You know, out of all of the uh, all of the conservative members that voted on that, the ones that were in Quebec, of course, you expect them to vote in favor of Quebec keeping those two seats. You expect that. What I didn't expect was that there was, uh, I think, four MPs from Western Canada that actually voted for Quebec to keep those two seats from inside of the Conservative Party of Canada. One of them was the member from Dawson Creek, uh, Bob Zimmer. Uh, one of them was Earl Dreeshen from Red Deer. Uh, Candace Bergen, who was the interim leader at the time, voted for Quebec to keep those two seats. Why? Was she pen Was she looking for maybe a, you know, <laughs> was she gunning for leadership herself, like ultimately? Or No, she couldn't. She couldn't actually, because as the interim leader at the time, she was barred from running for leader. There was, I, I don't understand it. To me, it just reeked of like, 
it, it was like an acknowledgement that Quebec votes were more important than ours. And that's exactly what that says. That, that stinks. That 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 is rotten to the core. If if you truly believe in democracy, that's rotten to the core. And uh, and that is something that um, I believe that those that those members uh, there was there, there was I think another one too, but I just can't think of them off the top of my head. Uh, those members of Parliament should answer for that. Mm -hmm. Do you know by uh, Do you know offhand if Earl Drieschen has any relation to Devin Drieschen? Yeah, I think they're a father and son. I do believe. Well, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Devin Drieschen personally. He's our provincial minister of transportation for anyone that, and I think economic corridors or something like that. If I'm wrong, um, post it in the comments below. Right, right. Straighten me out. Okay. I, I'm not infallible. But uh, yeah, no, that's really off putting. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's terrible. You just, now I'm even angrier than I was before. That's worse. <laughs> you know, don't be sorry. That's good. Welcome I like, to my I brain. like the anger. Yeah. I, well, I was going to say, you know, because uh, again, having talked to you in person, you're very calm, very positive, uh, very optimistic person, I think. And I'm um, like, if you got anger in there, you hide it very well. I, I'm not so good at hiding it anymore these days. So I congratulate, kudos to you for that. <laughs> I, I sometimes I wonder if maybe I should. I should just love, maybe people would identify. Uh, it's anger. Uh, I run into all kinds of people. If I can speak to that for a minute. Please do. I ran into all kinds of people. I ran into one gentleman. Uh, his name does not need to be mentioned, but he told me all, pretty much verbatim. He says, I'm done with politics. All I know is I'm waiting for the bullets to start flying. Mm. And he was acting. And you know what? Uh, 15 years ago, if somebody had said that, he would have been an off. Everybody would have been like, ah, that's nothing. You know, it's becoming more and more commonplace for people to start thinking like this. They are simply that angry they are that checked out they are and, and and i don't like that um you know people seem to think that civil war if we're going to talk about that openly and man that's that's a weird one to talk about in public but hey why not it gets talked about in private right mm -hmm. yeah it gets talked about in private so why don't we put it on the table and talk about it mm -hmm. you know uh you know and i've had people just assume that that would be that would be a great thing so many people think that. I don't think that. I think that would be terrible. I'm the father of four 20-something or three 20-something boys. I would never want to send them off to war any war. That would be terrible. Certainly not a war here. Oh, that would, that would that'd be, that'd be catastrophic. my good life. That'd be awful. I don't yeah. want that. If there is any other way to solve this problem, that's what we got to do. That is exactly what we have to do. We have to work every angle. We have to be the smartest that we can possibly be. We have to be the most principled person that we can possibly be. We can't give an inch. We have to be, we have to be sacrificial. You have to give of yourself. You cannot just sit back on your laurels and wait for somebody else to do the dirty work for you. You have right. to actually get involved. If you know, I'm gonna talk about this, like for instance, the money. No, nobody likes to talk about money. Let's not talk about money. You know, somebody might have to get off their wallet. I know times are tough. I get that too. I'm a working guy. I'm I'm just like everybody else. I see my dollar getting eroded every day. The things that, that I used to be able to think were possible are no longer possible, even though I'm making the same amount of money. But inflation is destroying that for me. I get it. I get it. But you know what? If you believe that something like the Maverick Party is like something that you would personally want to um, support, right? You like the ideas. We need your support every way. We need your volunteer hours. Uh, come and help us out. Spend some time. Invite me to a meeting. I'll come. Put together a table of your friends. Drop a dime into the payphone. Who knows what that is anymore? And then I'll come. And I'll sit with you at your kitchen table. I don't care. You can, I'll, I'll sit with five people. I'll sit with 500 people. I don't care. That's what this is for me. I'll do that. I'll, um, nobody pays me for my gas. I'll, but I'll, I'll show up because 
I believe this is something that we have to do. And I'm hoping that there's enough people that believe like me that will get together and we can make a difference together as a movement. You know, uh, what we've been doing is not working. We need to change. We need a different strategy. And I'm sorry, as good as I think Pierre Polyev is, man, the guy is great. He's a he's a fantastic order. You can tell he spent 17 years perfecting his trade. Yeah, no doubt. Done. He's great. But he's going to do nothing for Western Canada. Mark my words. Consider your words marked. I agree. I agree. He can't. I don't even care if he wanted to. He can't. The Senate will remain an ineffectual patronage appointment body of garbage that will never be the sober second thought that it was meant to be. It'll never turn into triple E, which is what we need. You know, some people say, oh, just get rid of the Senate. No, no, it has a real thing. We should be using it. Man, if we had the Senate, it would make a, it would help us out a lot in the Canadian West. You know, so many people don't understand what the Triple E Senate was meant to be. Uh, the Triple E Senate would have, uh, if, if it were able to be achieved, it would be great for Western Canadians because, uh, you know, well, E, the Triple the E means is that it's equal, meaning that every area, geographical area of Canada has the same amount of representatives, not based on population, just by geographical area, right? So you know, Southern Ontario might get two members and Northern Ontario might get two members because it's a big spot. You know, Alberta would get two members, Saskatchewan get two members, even though, you know, they have varying population densities. That would be that would be equal. You know, um, the second E would be that they would be elected. That'd mm. be awesome because like any. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any political guy, you should be able to fire him. You know, you, you got to be able to, but not this lifetime patronage appointment. That's just ridiculous. You know, they have to be scared for their jobs. If they're not doing their jobs, we need to get in there somebody who will. That's that's elected. That's smart. We should do that. Then the other thing is, is of course, it just has to work. It has to be, you know, equitable. It has to It has to work. And if we could do that, that would make a massive difference for us. But as it is, change, we have to do something differently. Yeah. But <laughs> rant complete. No, that's good. I like the rant. We needed to hear it. Um, it's going to pop up your party website there on the, on the screen here, okay. maverickparty.ca. So, People can get a hold of you here, yes? Um, yeah. They can get you around the kitchen table. They can drop – there's a contact form. They can drop a, an email, give you a call, whatever the case is. They can check out your party platform. It's pretty thorough there what the platform is. And there's a blog there as well where there's uh, updates all the time. And uh, I'm just going to say, uh, as Colin said, there's 111 seats in the House of Commons representing Western Canada – and in the Maverick Party's first year, first election in 2021, they ran 35 candidates. So that's, what, 40, 30, 40 something candidates left. I'm not good at quick math, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, spots that are not, they don't have representation right now, and they need good people. And well, this was one of my um, criticisms of the People's Party of Canada under Max. And and again, I love the policies. Like I said, I became a member. I really wanted to support them. And uh but in their hurry to become a federal party and to have people in seats and have people in their electoral district or their, their ridings, uh, I think that their, that vetting process and the quality of candidate was a little bit suspect in some, not in all cases, but certainly in some cases. And, um, you know, so I'm just trying to say that if you are a solid person, you're a good person, that you have the good values and you do want to, if you like what you heard on this interview, uh, reach out. Maybe you would consider putting your name forward to run to give Western Canada the change that it needs. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess that's that's all I'll say. If you want to add to that, please do. I was so proud of our candidates that we had in the last election. Uh, we, like we said, yeah, we had 35 candidates, so you know we we were selective. 
And uh, I, I was proud to be amongst that crowd. You know, uh, we were the only party out there that didn't have at least one candidate that was, uh, you know, experienced some sort of a aha gotcha moment mm. by the media, right? We were the only party out there and they were looking, I'll guarantee you. It's not like we got a free pass. It spoke volumes to, to the carefulness that our leadership had at the time of picking our candidates, you know, and, and frankly, none of them were political, were previous political people. They were just good people, you know, who wanted to make a difference. And, and I was proud to be amongst them. And that's exactly what we're looking to repeat. We will not, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of just paper candidates. And mm -hmm. frankly, that is indeed what happened with the PPC at times. And <laughs> they ended up with some, I, I don't need to bash them, but they did end up with some that were not the best candidates. And frankly, I'm glad that they didn't get elected. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I hope that, that, uh, that the people are understanding me in that they can trust us to, to try and find people because uh, ultimately it is about proper representation, right? Um, you know, it, it's so much so actually that within the, and it's in our website, you can go and read about it, but we do have an obtainable journey through recall. And that's part of our, our ethos. It's on the website where it'll describe how we will be the only party out there who can do a, uh, a, an obtainable journey through recall, which isn't obtainable right now, pretty much anywhere in Canada. Uh, certainly you can ask uh, uh, Mayor Gondak and Gondak and Calgary there, you know, uh, it would have taken more votes to get her out of power than it actually did to put her in power for that, for that to work. Uh, you know, and, and so we have gone to the trouble of of making sure that we will have a, a system of recall that's obtainable. If you really are unhappy with your maverick um, uh, representative, you will have a way to get rid of them. And we'll be the only, and frankly, if I'm hoping, if that ever did happen, for instance, if that ever did happen and you're like, you know, uh, Mr whoever or Mrs. Whoever is not doing their job. And, and this is frankly has happened in, uh, in different levels of government where people have been elected and then have not done the job. You know, you should not as, as Joe citizen or Jane citizen, I see, I'm getting better at this. So, that, you, know, <laughs> you, can, uh, you know, you, you know, you shouldn't have to wait four years or whatever the remainder of the term is to get rid of them. Right. We should be able to do that. Now, my hope is, is that, because we've proven our integrity, that we have provided this path to removing a, a, an inferior candidate, that if we find a better one, that you'll vote that one in, knowing mm. that we are the only ones that gave you that option. Yeah, good point. Because we, we believe, I believe, integrity is everything. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> I used to say, and I still do, it's important. Um, one of my goals is, you know, people say, oh, at work, they, they, uh, <laughs> they've given me a nickname at work. They call me preacher. Cause once I get started, it's like I'm preaching, they won't stop. So they call me preacher at work. Yeah. So much so that it's actually on my work clothes, but anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they, uh, I want it so that people don't want to spit when they say politician anymore. You know, mm. like so many times, I, so there's a negative connotation to that word. Oh, you're just a politician. Uh, we have to give, that should be a noble office. You know, and it's, it's not that anymore. So my goal would be to try and restore some of that honor to the office. And holding my candidates to that level. You know, I don't know about you, but... I don't remember the last time I saw my member of parliament out and about anywhere. No. That's ridiculous. They are given an enormous budget yearly, not their wage, that's separate. They're given an enormous budget to spend in their riding, hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
and I don't see him. That won't happen with the Maverick Party. Our guys will be Maverick Party. Our guys will be get in their vehicles, do whatever you got to do to get out there, and so that your people, your hundred and ten thousand people, know who you are, and are and and know who to come and complain to. Because frankly, that's what's going to happen. True, <laughs> we accept it. That's part of the job, you know. But if you don't like that, then you shouldn't be a politician. No, that's that's a, you're in the wrong job, you know. So that's that's what we have to do, you know. So that's that's what we have to do. It's important. Uh -huh.